guess, I guess so. Hello, everybody. I am very happy to welcome Adrian Thomas to our, this week's Zoom Muse. I was remembering today the first time I met Adrienne was at a Seeker Arts Camp in the Isle of Wight. Do you remember that, Adrienne? Oh, God. It was a yes. wonderful. It was amazing. It was a wonderful experience. And um, I'd never met you before, and I met you, and I, I, I said to you, um, is this Seeker Arts Camp okay? What do you think of it? And you said, it's a stonker. And I had absolutely no idea at all what stonker meant. Is it positive or negative? And I realized later it's, a, it's a, one of those English positive expressions like dog's bollocks. Yeah. But I've since then, I've um, got to know Adrienne really well. We've worked together on a number of projects. Um, and she is, in some ways, a, a typical Gemini. She has a lot of different talents. She is a wonderful singer. She used to sing in a group called In Bob We Trust. Remember that, Adrienne? Do I remember it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, died, Bob we trust, which was a bunch of super people singing Bob Dylan songs. She's also a very good artist and she was doing a lot of wonderful art in Lewis until they closed her gallery or the place where she did them. She is also um, a voice trainer. She's done a wonderful book. She, uh, she's actually made some genuine discoveries about the voice and about personal growth and what's the book called Adrienne? Unleash Your Voice. Unleash Your Voice, yes. Um, <clears throat> plus she helps people do funerals, she helps people um, come to terms with the death of a loved one which is a, a, a very deep and difficult and necessary role to play in society and she is a very good poet. I think that's, that's pretty well all I can think of, but there may be one or two other things, but she is quite a lady. And um, one of the things that I love about her is that she does this English thing of talking in different accents. So she does North Country, she does Midlands, she does high, upper class English, and she does a bit of Cockney as well. And um, I'm really, I've been looking forward to this for some time. I think that's all I want to say about it. And um, I now pass it over to Adrienne Thomas. Thank you, Emmanuel. No pressure. Get my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with the song. Uh, it's, it's very cultured. It was written 20 years ago but it's still relevant and it's called a woman of a certain age and it's a celebration of the older woman <clears throat> so i'm going to try and sing it with no accompaniment i am a woman in my later years with all the usual self-doubts and fears i am a woman of a certain age yet here i'm strutting my stuff on the stage Yes, sisters, we must be courageous, dance on tables, be outrageous, put our mark upon the page. Because there's a certain fundamental truth without the tight self-consciousness of youth. There is a wildly liberating force. It comes on strongly following divorce. It makes you want to try your luck because you no longer give up. And time is running out, of course. Well, have you heard about the latest rage? It's really great to be a certain age. Rip off your corsets, throw them in the air. Hitch up your skirt and then let down your hair. We'll show these youths a thing or two on how to live it up and do all kinds of things they never dare. This thing called age, it is all in the mind. And furthermore, it's culturally defined. Yes, in a Latin place, a sunny climb. I'd be considered to be in my prime. So bang the gong and beat the drum because the best is yet to come. And yes, I'm really glad that I'm. 
I am a woman of a certain age. Some attitudes just put me in a rage. Or oh, let me walk along a Latin street. Or oh, let my body feel that Latin beat. And yes, I'd like to feel the danger of bumping into a dark stranger and our smoldering eyes will meet. And then the noisy street will fade away. And we would dance a sultry merengue. He'd kiss my neck and whisper in my ear. Who are you and what are you doing here? Our pelvic bones would fuse together. And then we'd dance on forever without reticence or fear. And though I'm still in England's pleasant land, I know that some of you will understand. Don't tell me to wake up and be redeemed. Don't try to tell me that you've never dreamed of dancing in the Latin Quarter, doing things you didn't utter, things you wouldn't let your daughter do. But stand your ground. You found a time in your life when you're bound to want to do the things you didn't do when you were young and didn't have a clue. I'll buy a ticket and I'll fly away. I'll dance a rumba and an apple I'll tell you when I'm due to go. Come wave your knickers at Heathrow. Watch me fly up, up and away. Ole! Don't ask. I'm 20 years older than when I was. I was a little... <clears throat> Yorkshire. North of England, very specific cultural references. One of the haunting themes of, is, is of unfulfilled dreams and hopes because you're told new dreams and hopes. So I wrote this also years ago and it's about friendship and it's called Laundry. And I think some of you will have heard it before, but you're going to have to hear it again. That's just how it is. My best friend and me sitting with our laundry, watching our lives go round. Numbed by the sound of humming in the air and through the open door the smell of drunk's piss in our nostrils roar wondering what we're waiting for in the crushed coke cans and used condoms of our street our dreams so sweet catching at our feet will we miss the beat will the gods retreat can we repeat our opportunity we're indiscreet we smoke we eat we feel replete we don't acknowledge our defeat there amidst the steam and heat Sticking to a plastic seat, we read a magazine and cheat our destiny. In the pages of Hello, with all the very famous, who would blame us if they leave the door ajar? And we run so fast, so far, shooting like a shooting star, by the biggest, brightest car, drive past the drunk's piss, give it a miss, live in bliss, plant a kiss on life's lips. Miss getting the old man's tea, my friend and me. We lift our faces, go to the races, leaving no tra- oh, vi sorry, see foreign places, leaving no traces behind. We find the kind of mind that no ties bind. Two of a kind, we dress refined. Or else, like hookers, guys that want to fuck us, agents want to book us, and we treat them all like suckers, and sleep with kings and truckers, like Marilyn Monroe. But then, Somebody shook us out of our reverie, said, is the dryer free now? So together, we, my friend and me, ill-conceived, relieved, retrieved our laundry, still believe we were not there, holding up the final sheet, holding, folding tight and neat. Suddenly, our blue eyes meet. She offers me a sweet and I open it and suck it and our eyes say, fuck it, as we burst onto the street, shooting the breeze like Thelma and Louise. We drive off the edge of the cliff into the sunset. Um, this poem contains a sort of attempt at language. You know, when you're so 
mm, you can't quite get your words out and, and, and sort of funny words come out. So um, this is called The Dark Side of the Ironing Board and it's about domestic frustration. Trying to be good in the steamy kitchen, blotting and bloating the morning away, bleeping, hello, and bumping into things and banging breakfast onto the table and, and bleating and bleeding and blacking things. Good morning, God morning, bye. Hubby goes, bye bye. Offspring snookling back of car, away, away. Safe as houses, school, nice school, good school. God school. Schooling shoals of little lives, little livers for me. Don't have to. Don't want to. Somebody else do it. Do it for me. Me drowning, me not waving, me drowning. Later, later, cleaning later. And well rinsed neighbours. Sneaking and snotting the blinds, twitching the privet, polishing the grass, snooking and spying and spitting and snaking. Back off, bitches! No good noses. And me, council house catalogue dreamscape shattered on half moon rug, and baby screaming, head collision, and television soundscape deafening, and smoke fury haven in a bottle, and angry, angry, angry. Alone now with iron, metal and clothes and steam, nice clatter, and pressing things, pressing faces, nosy, no good faces, into the board, into the carpet, into the floor, into the night, into the nothingness, into the roof of despair, the cloud of unknowing, the bottle of boozing, the bliss of oblivion, into the dream, into the dream. I'm going to try an experiment on you all now. So if you all feel a bit furry, like, like what do you call those guinea pigs? Um, try and sort of transcend it if you can. Uh, I've often wondered if my songs would work as spoken poetry. So I'm going to try it out on you now. And this is a song called Scarlet and Black and it came from a show originally called Speaking in Tongues. And, and it's just the personification of different women. I don't know where they came from. They sort of inhabited me. And this woman, from what I can gather, is a sort of hostess. She's not a prostitute, but she's a hostess. And it's called Scarlet and Black. Scarlet and black, scarlet and black, these are my colours, my friends and my enemies, and the embers of my eyes, the cavern of my mouth and my most secret place. Behind this face, these are the only colours that dance. Scarlet is the colour of my dresses, my shoes, my lips and my tongue and my bad velvet eyes, of the ribbon at my throat and the wound in my side. It's the colour of the robes of the angels who surround me, of the fires of redemption, of the wreath on my tomb and the desolate womb that is weeping. Black is the colour of my stockings, my fingers, my thoughts and my deepest fears, of the sky over Golgotha. It's the colour of the robes of the angels who desert me and the darkness of redemption, of throats and gold and infinity, and it's mine to keep as the enemy advances and bids me sleep. And tattooed on my arm is a dragon and a sword which I place upon his shoulder as we dance. It's my only way of saying I am here, I am here, as my enemies advance. Oh, such longing. Oh, such loving a mind to give. Is it only now for money that I live? If I ask God to forgive me, do you think he will? How are they feeling as they're handing me the money that should buy flowers for their wives? As their children run to greet them, can they smell my perfume? Do I sanctify their lives? Ah, oh, there are so many men. Ah, oh, 
there are so many men. Yet, somewhere in my being is a fragment of believing that I might be worth more than this. Somewhere in my being is a fragment of believing that I might be worth much more than this. It's very strange without the music. Um, um, I think I'll do a, a comedy after that. And, and going back up north, properly up north now. And um, I think this is a man's voice, but um, I'm not really sure. And it's called a, a Quiet Drinky with My Friends. But we've all been there, I think, in our youth. <clears throat> have had a few drinks. Methinks I'm a bit pissed. Uh, and for you in America, that means drunk, not angry. Methinks I'm a bit pissed. Just then I totally missed my footing and fell over on the floor. And what's more? And they picked me up and sat me down and said, don't have no more. Well, I tried to say thank you, but it came out yanktho. And I'm silly, silly Rory, I'm a bore. They told me to be quiet and I nearly caused a right because I swung out with my fist and I just completely missed the person I was aiming for. And I hit a complete stranger. Well, put us all in danger because this bloke was about six foot four. He said, here, what's your game? Would you like some of the same? I said, only oh, shoved his hairy fist right in my face. And he grabbed me by the collar and he really tried to follow what he shouted but it vanished without trace. It was just an ineffective, blurry stream of vile invective. As he shouted, he kept spitting in my face. I said, oops, I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Because I thought it best to try to make amends. I didn't mean to hit you. I never even met you. I'm just having a quiet drinky with my friends. Landlord comes in at the double, says, I don't want any trouble. I said, I'm not causing trouble, honestly. He told me to bugger off. Said, I think you've had enough. I could tell he didn't like the look of me. Then my mates all gathered round and they made me sit back down and told me to shut up. They were quite rough. Then the landlord shouted, time, I said, one vodka and lime. They all turned on me and yelled, you've had enough. Then I felt a bit uneasy because I really felt quite queasy. And I said, I think I'm going to be sick. Someone shouted, get him out. There was some rushing about and they bundled me outside here double quick. The streets whizzing round and round. Sorry. So I think I'll just lie down somehow. This is how my evenings always end. But it's really rather pleasant lying here on this cool pavement after having a quiet drinky with my friends. How much time have I got? Um, I'll just carry on in the, in the comic vein because it's a quickie i hope you understand the language but there's a certain type of men in in the north of england and they still exist don't they they're like this and they cast aspersions on women i mean anyway they used to hang out in the bars in sheffield with the bum crack you know and it's called fat slobby men in bars i hate those fat slobby men in bars showing belly showing arse laughing farting belching squelching the way to the loo's no taboos after 30 pints of beer they leer and they sneer at us older women call us queer because we haven't got a fella call us fat old nags old bags old slags i wonder do they look into the mirror when they shave they behave big and brave like they've been sent here to save us all like we should be really grateful, though they're gross and mean and hateful for a glance 
or a chance at romance or a dance with these devastating heroes? Did they know? Does it show that I'd really rather throw myself underneath a train would cause me far less pain than snogging one of them than red-nosed, red-eyed, red-necked, sweaty, smelly, jelly-bellied, hairy ass men? Present company accepted. Um, uh, oh. I'll do another song as, as a poem. I'm just picking them at random now. I don't know what this is about, uh, but it's called The Stranger. My father is a long dead sailor resting on the bottom of the deep and my sister hides behind convent walls. My mother moves so slowly, only wishing to lay down and sleep, and my brother has no words to say, and never speaks at all. In my house are many birds and fishes, all longing to be free, and the pages in my books are fading, though they still speak to me. In my room are tricks and shadows from a candle burning low, and painted on the angry ceiling, are all the words I know. And a serpent lays coiled in the firelight and his tongue flicks to and fro, to and fro. My hand moves across the page and I listen in the silence for a shifting in the wind outside my darkened window that tells me he's coming with his wolf's eyes and his snake's throat and his hands like a raven, and his shark's fin arms, and his back like black water. And he enters without knocking, and he asks for wine and firelight, and the serpent sheds its skin. Like my father and my mother, like my sister and my brother, who are trapped in their own silence, I am surrounded by words. I am their wretched prisoner. Then the stranger smiles like razors and the serpent shrinks and dies. I'm asking him a question which he answers with his eyes. My name is fear. Yet I make him warm and welcome and the ghosts gather round and smile and my family breathes. They are awaiting, awaiting, awaiting my release. And I long for the world beyond words where I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Can you hear me, Adrienne? Yes. yes. Now let's see, one more poem. Night. Oh, I think mm, I've got. Um, what has Jesus got a good said? Raven poem. Do you have I a good haven't. Raven poem? No. No. All right. <laughs> I've only got the song. When a murder of ravens, but I don't know if I can remember it. Never mind. So what has Jesus ever done for me or come fall apart with me? I might do that one because you're always being asked to be good and be pure and, and be happy and be being positive. You must be positive. So I thought I'd like to tell him about not being positive. And it's called Come Fall Apart With Me. Come, fall apart with me, go to pieces, come to the edge, unravel, unwind, give up the pledge. Crawl on your knees with me, slither and slouch, come, be a potato on my sloppy couch. Smoke till you choke with me, refuse to cope. Tell me your life story and I'll tell you mine. Let's drown, let's go down with a bottle of wine. Dribble 
and weep with me. Whinge, sob, repine. Let's roll off the couch and fall onto the floor. Let's not answer the phone or the knock at the door. Let's lose it. Let's booze it. Let's wallow. Let's start a slob's revolution, a drunk's constitution, invite destitution, a world institution for the fallen apart. I haven't had a drink for a week either. <laughs> well. That's it. Well, you, yeah, if you, you, you. Proceed. Uh, she's finished. Yeah. Proceed. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, can open more, your mic. You, 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 you. You wanted me to finish, yes? Adrian, just want to tell you that was an absolutely wonderful reading. Wonderful. I wonderful. totally enjoyed everything. Thank you. You are way, you are way beyond beige. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Love your sense of humor. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I love your sense of real. <laughs> Thank you. I and love that. Yeah. That was such, such a treat. If you can raise treat. your hands, then we can see who would like to say something. Yeah. Okay. Maya and Helena. Helena first. That was such a treat. It was Thank so, you. so rich and it was just marvelous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maya, then I Laura. Love your presentation, and I especially love the first one. I think musical theatre, I could just see it on Broadway in some huge oh, yeah. character, you know. I mean, seriously, it was like on point there. And all your, yeah, your presentation is beyond expectation. I, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Maya. And it's enunciation, stress, pauses the whole lot, you know, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, and it's lovely to see you. We, I had such a great time with Maya over in um, Burbank. Are you still in Burbank? Yes. Yeah. I liked it there, I thought it was lovely, stop it. Or we'll talk after, if you like, if you have a few yeah, moments. Yeah. Well, if they let us stay on. Laura. Absolutely loved your poetry just on the page it would be stunning and wonderful but your presentation just takes it into a whole other stratosphere it, it's like you, you know you you exude you have no kind of restraint it, it just makes everything alive it makes everything so thank you thank you well, you know laura many years ago i i submitted some of those early poems about the fat men and things uh, to a publisher and he said he, he did me a favor he said this is performance poetry on the page it's puerile and infantile <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay now <laughs> in a way it's true it needs to yeah so he gave yeah. me he, he gave me a kick up the bum but uh, in a nice way in a favorable way but thank you well it's <laughs> beautiful performance and wonderful poetry <laughs> Susi Lavati and then Renata. Oh yes, well, uh, first of all, um, Rusida, I'd really like to thank you and your team for organizing this. Thank you. And Emmanuel, uh, because uh, it's really wonderful. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for doing this. And um, also, you referenced the first time you met Emmanuel, Adrienne, and it was um, in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. And that's when you introduced me um, as a singer to Peter Truman. So oh, we went, right. yeah. So we went off to the chapel on the at the camp, uh, the school camp, and we have a Subud brother here in, in Vancouver who's in a care home now, but Robert Jordan, who went to that school actually, that on the Isle oh, of Wight wow. as a boy, oh. he was English. 
But anyway, the following year, I came back. Well, I was living in England for seven years at the time, but I'd gone back to visit my dad and, in North America. And, um, and Peter and I did a concert at the Key in the Isle of Wight. And I stayed with the Trumans. And today is their daughter's birthday, is what I know. <laughs> no, but, right. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know if he's, I don't know if any of them are still alive. I don't know. I've Ruth, lost touch with her. Ruth is, because I did, um, I'm in touch with Ruth now, who's very happily married oh, with two daughters. And I did a, a voice workshop at the College of the University of Performing Arts, which is where she teaches. Well, I'd like to, uh, I'll, I'll connect with you privately to get her email because it's her birthday today. Yeah, that's right. Ruth Paul, she's called now. Yeah. And then the other thing is regarding your work, Adrienne, I really appreciate the clarity of voice and the projection. It's so easy to be able to, uh, I'm getting other noises here. Um, so easy to be able to appreciate your presentation without having to work hard to hear your voice. The clarity and the, everything is uh, really lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Renata. I just wanted to share how much I enjoyed your, your voice, Adrienne. And I love the theatrical nature of your work. And I think, I guess, I was most taken, as a poet, I was most taken by the rhythm of your, uh, of your language. You know, it's very, it's very rhythmic and it's very, I don't want to say sing-songy because that's a little, you know, has some detrimental meaning, but it has such a lovely rhythm. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite parts of it. I mean, in addition to it being hysterical <laughs> and very real. Thank you. But thank you. Really I, enjoyed it. I would yes, just yes. like to say that th this voice, um, I was painfully shy, terribly shy as a child. I had quite a, when I look back on it, it was quite a brutal environment, that house. There was a lot of shouting and screaming and you know, violent emotion and stuff. And so I just sort of shrank. So sometimes people say, oh, it must be wonderful to just get on the stage and sing like that. But it's, it's actually taken me many, many years to get here. And I'm extraordinarily grateful to the Latihan because that's when it, it just sort of came out like that. My mouth, somebody opened my mouth and out came this sound. Oh, so wow. I do like to reassure people it wasn't, it's not just arrived. It's, it's um, yeah. But I do appreciate it. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Emmanuel. Um, what, um, what do you have to sell? <laughs> <laughs> Never thought of that. Not, I'm not good at marketing. Here is my book. Yeah. And, uh, it's beautifully illustrated. So, and it's full of all the voice exercises that I've sort of developed over the years. So to take your voice from, you know, whatever it is to wherever it can go by resonating in the chakra centers uh, and direct, you know, sending it. Can you hold the book closer to the camera? I didn't see it. Yes, and we will. Ah. Can you see it? I, I can't yes. see what you can see. Yes, 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 now. Get it on I have a copy of it. I personally it recommend it. Sorry, Maya. Can we get it on Amazon? No, I don't want to trade with Amazon. Right, right. I think that. Uh, but, but but send me send me the title and then we can put it uh, be posted can, under this video. You can yes. get it on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and I'm selling individual Zoom sessions of voice work because if I do it individually. Uh -huh. It can go a lot deeper. Um, oh, do you have I'm, CD? No, I don't. A I've CD. only got a really old one. I've only got a really old one. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, and I've also got some collages. Hang on. Sorry. Ah, 
Ah, look. They're uh, Adrienne's, they're not mine. <laughs> I'm not oh, great. Thank you, Adriana. I haven't got all of them, I've just got some. Thank you. Oh. oh. Oh wow. Those, wow. Are wow. Those are delightful. Those are awesome. Wow. Meet my manager. <laughs> so they're photo and I did I, I did them because so much of my work is so heavy and dark. A lot I mean I read you the lighter stuff, but some of the songs can go really quite dark and you know, dealing with funerals. So sometimes it's just nice to do something very light because I've done heavyweight paintings of you know, uh, Mary Magdalene and Joan of Arc and got right into all that female iconography. Mm. Wow. So it's just a really nice balance to come home and just cut cards up and make uh, fun faces. They're supposed to make you smile. <laughs> and then you crazy colors, but I can give Reseda all the info. <laughs> yes, and then we can post it. Um, Adrian, you started to share with us how how the process was in the Latian when your, your voice came up. Can you share m more about this process? Um, I'll try. I mean, I, I, when I was a kid, I used to escape upstairs, as many people did, from this sort of brutal... I've, I've written a poem about it, but I won't read it now. Um, and uh, like, most, like many people, I'd just sing with the hairbrush. Now that I know I was a rock star, <laughs> and that was my way out of this um, turgid... Anyway, we won't go there place so um when this suddenly it was literally like someone i pulled my mouth open and this sound came out well it, it terrified me i think that's what's mm. important to know and for other people sometimes we can be really scared of our own thing our own power if you like so it was years and years and then i thought well i'll go and have singing lessons and train it and it was whilst i was having the singing lessons that i realized you can't just train a voice la, 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 if the stuff underneath that's not resolved because it cracks. Mm. And I very quickly made the connection between emotion and singing. And that's why we love singing and, and stuff. So mm -hmm. I had a great teacher uh, and I would say, I feel like crying. And she'd say, well, cry then, but you'll still have to pay me. Uh, <laughs> she was great. I've forgotten her name. You remember her, don't you? Rihanna went to her for a while. And um, so I thought there's something in this then about the voice and emotion and stuff. So there wasn't any training, really. And I went, um, well, there was one lot of training, but the guy ran off with all the money. Uh, so what happened was um, David Anderson, the late, great David Anderson, had this studio out in the countryside. And I went out there day after day after day and I just kind of didn't receive in that way but sort of said to my voice what do you want to do what exercises do you want to do and so I started just following and realized it was taking me in all these different places in my body and I thought oh these are the chakras aren't they we don't we don't do chakras in Yorkshire so <laughs> I started to about all of that <laughs> and uh, it just went on and it was terrifying i didn't know what the hell was happening and being made to sing raw really big low notes it was very challenging because as women generally we're told we sort of we go up in general and a lot of women i work with are really reluctant to to, to sing very low notes they say oh i sound like a man but why that's designated to gender i don't know so eventually I thought, right, well, I better start writing this down. So I did. And then I started using it in my practice and it's just sort of developed on from there. And, and then I found if I listened to other people's voices when we were in a duo, I could pick up information. It's extraordinary. I've got no idea why it works. Don't ask. I've not a clue. So I think the, the most obvious one was a woman I was working with and she made the sound and I kept seeing this little boy in a coat with frayed cuffs and um, no, nope, didn't mean anything to her. No, no idea what you're talking about. No nope, rubbish. So I thought, oh God, I've boo-booed here. And then I suddenly heard the word twin and I said, do you have a twin? And it was like an atom bomb went off. And she went, oh my God. She had a twin brother who she felt had stood between her and her parents and got all the love and all the attention. 
So she was sitting on this sort of rage and, and, and rejection that she didn't even know was there because you're not, you know, you're not allowed to dislike your brother, are you? And want to kill them, mm. shut it down. So it, what it does is it reaches, it seems to go into places that, that, that bypasses the mind. I and mean, she, nobody, she wouldn't have come to me and said, I think I hate my twin brother ever you know it's sort of um so it's all a bit mysterious really but i just go with it as long as it's there and if it goes away it goes away it's mm. a very long answer sorry yeah no it was thank, thank you thank you for sharing <laughs> it's a good share thank you um can i ask who the uh next week's poet is I'm not sure. Is it Stefan Friedman? Maybe. Stefan Friedman. Yeah, but oh, I'm not nice. sure. I have to look. I have to look. I don't know. I think it's Stefan Friedman. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. okay. I think that's it. Wonderful. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming. I'm so grateful. So it's lovely. Thanks. Wonderful. <laughs> a little bit longer, Emmanuel. <laughs> a bit more. Well, here it. As we fade away, as we fade away, there's this ancient Bolivian sound. <laughs> Adrienne, I'd like you to improvise a song as I do this, please. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone. Bye. Bye.